So what we have here is your standard PlayStation 3 80 gigabytes. So it's the fat version of the PlayStation. It's the one with the four USB ports. I don't know if you can see that here, but it has four USB ports. Um, so that it's backwards compatible. It means that it can play PlayStation 2 games as well as PlayStation 3. Now the problem with these models is that they tend to overheat and then they go into wire LOD, which is yellow light of death. And um, once you open it up and fix it, you'll find that um, it will probably stop working again. Now, the one in particular that I'm going to show you, what actually happened to it, is once it suffered that YLOD, the fan actually stopped working. And so I had to come up with something quite unusual to fix the problem. And that I'll explain to you in a minute. So here is the standard 19 um, blade fan from the PlayStation 3 80 gigabyte. Um, it's the original release date PlayStation that's PlayStation 2 compatible. Now this fan, once I opened up the PlayStation, um, no longer worked. And so I had to think of a way of perhaps either replacing that. Now the fan itself had stopped working and also the connection point on the motherboard had blown so there was no way that any other fan would actually work on this PlayStation 3 but obviously you still need to cool it now what I decided to do was um, I had a laptop uh, fan one of the tray fans that sit under the laptop which cost me um, a pound in the pound shop and it works really well. I had a, you know, definitely worked well on my laptops, keeping the base of them cool. And I thought, well, it's plastic, and I must be able to cut it up in some way in order to make it useful to um, use inside the PlayStation 3. It's a USB fan, and obviously this sort of PlayStation has a number of USB ports, so using one for the fan wouldn't be a massive problem. I looked online, I couldn't see any solutions, any suggestions, so this was my only solution. And so what I actually did is I cut up that PlayStation, um, sorry, that laptop fan. And as you'll see, it's attached here on the base of the PlayStation where the original fan went. And um, it's, a, it's not exactly the perfect soaring job that I've done on the fan, as you can see. There's a few cracks and whatever, and it's not directly in the middle but it does actually sit on the base of the PlayStation. I screwed it in, I've made my own screw holes, I've cut cut the uh, legs off it so that it sits flat, and then the fan goes into the little uh, hole or port where the original fan went. Now, you know, it's not as powerful as the original fan, but it does seem to keep it cool and it does seem to run um, okay. I don't know whether it will run for hours or whether it will stop working after, you know, maybe two or three hours or, or a few tries. But I have switched it on and off maybe five, six times, run it for 10, 15 minutes, and it seems to run okay. Um, now, as you will see, what I also had to do in order to create a port for the USB to connect um, to the PlayStation uh, USB port I actually had to also change the front of the uh, the actual PlayStation 3 where you have the four USB slots I had to almost merge two of those USB slots in order to create a big enough opening for the USB to come from the outside from the inside of the PlayStation all the way to the outside and um, once sort of set up, you know, this, this works wonderfully. I mean, I can't begin to tell you how, how well it works. And also, because it lights up when it's working, you can look down the side of the PlayStation. So if you have a look here, when you normally are running the PlayStation, if you look down those vents, whenever the PlayStation is actually on, then you can actually see the blue light of the fan to tell you that the fan is actually spinning which isn't something that was not available on the original PlayStation so in th in that sense it does actually reassure you that the fan is working even if it's running quite silently 
Now, I couldn't think of any other solutions, so, you know, this was the best option as far as I was concerned. And, um, you know, if anybody else has any other solutions that might also work, it would be interesting to know. But I also fixed the yellow light of death, obviously using the um, heating of the motherboard to create the um, the necessary, uh, should I say, um, situation or conditions for the processor to sit back on the motherboard properly. And this does work perfectly now. And so um, I will demonstrate it working in a second. Okay, so I've now set up the PlayStation um, which was suffering from a broken fan and a broken fan uh, connector in order to demonstrate to you that using your basic laptop based fan for a pound from our local pound shop I managed to fix the problem by connecting that fan to USB port adapting it a bit so that it actually fits on the PlayStation and um, hopefully you'll see in a second that it works and hopefully it won't blow up because that would be quite embarrassing so I'm just trying to switch it on now now that, don't do this at home this is not recommended that you use a PlayStation whilst it's actually um, sort of taken apart the way I've taken it apart it's not the done thing but as you'll see you've got your PlayStation logo occurring now what it needs to do obviously is cool and I've forgotten to plug in the fan so I need to plug in the fan which if you just bear with me I'm doing that so I've plugged in the fan and as you'll see from that it's all working fine there's one PlayStation connected you have your fan spinning And, you know, you, everything else seems to be working fine. So this is this was the only way, as I said, I could find to fix the problem because the normal fan connector was no longer working. Now, this seems to cool the um, PlayStation fine. As you will see, it's plugged into USB port, and that's the thing that's really operating it. And, um, you know, it's not the perfect solution but it's something that um, hopefully will allow the PlayStation to work for you know a number of months or weeks or what have you actually I did this about two about a month ago actually and it's been working for the whole month now so you know if you find that you've done something like this yourself and it has proven to work or if you'd like any information and help in um, creating this sort of uh, setup to, to make it work then you know you're welcome to leave a message or email me and I will get back to you with any suggestions I can think of or any instructions that will allow you to do this safely because one of the most important things is safety and you know obviously I knew what I was doing I actually build computers and I have trained people in building computers and I've taught in a college and so I understand the inner operations of um, things such as this but if you're not familiar with taking computers apart and uh, use messing around with um, electrical devices then I would recommend that you do not even attempt to do this because you could get yourself um, really seriously harmed or cause a fire or anything like that so be very careful when doing this and also keep an eye on your pets if you have any whilst you're doing this because they can they will get tempted to mess about with the lights and other bits and they can harm themselves so thank you and I hope you enjoyed my video